And then we have the Cowboys and the Giants. What the hell happened with this game? <laughs> you know, I actually thought this was the best game of the week as yeah. far as, like, objective. You know, obviously there's a different game that I've heard. But uh, as far as, like, from an objective watching football, you know, just – it was, a, it was a good game. It was a close game down to the wire. Mm-hmm. The most amazing thing to me is that the Giants won and Eli Manning didn't get a touchdown. Yeah. That's, you know, they scored 27 points and uh, no receiving, no passing. I, th- I think the best, the biggest thing I saw to this is, is in, you know, week one it was Cowboys and Giants. And Cowboys came out on top, yeah. and that was a pretty damn close game too. And Cowboys, you yeah. know, made a giant fourth, you know, quarter run at the very end. But this game was so close. But you know who ended up losing it for them was Matt Castle. Yeah, he did. Matt Castle just looked like how Matt Castle has always looked in the NFL: throwing interceptions, making bad plays, making bad calls, and yes, you know, every once in a while he'll throw one of those. 35 yard bombs or 40 yard you know throws downfield when someone who's just wide open and that didn't happen at the very end in the fourth quarter where there's people who are just wide open for some reason but other than that he lost the game because of the interceptions and something that you know Eli didn't really do and it's just kind of how it worked I mean, out yeah I mean no disrespect to Matt Castle but he's a backup for yeah him. Oh, yeah. And I think it's because, like, I've seen Matt Castle play for the Vikings for a few years. Even last year, he Uh, was brought in uh, because Teddy Bridgewater was injured at the beginning of the season. That's right. And he he looked just as bad then, you know. And he he was their backup for, I think, a while. Um, I think, if I remember right, he was a starter for Vikings, and then, like, four years later, he came back as a backup and then yeah, ended up being a something. starter or, or something, like, weird like that again. Uh, and every, it just never changed. And it hasn't changed. And I think he's been in the league for, like, 12 years now or something. Yeah, like, he, he's been around for a while. He's, and he's just – and I guess the same thing. Like, no disrespect, but he's definitely uh, not a starter. I and, don't know how many more years he's got left, honestly. No. I mean, unless he just wants to ride it out as being a backup for a while which yeah. honestly isn't a bad choice because hey you get paid for it and every once in a while you might you know get these starting positions but yeah i mean if you think about it he gets paid to watch football so that's not a bad job that's not a bad job at all <laughs> i mean i would be a janitor and get if i can get paid <laughs> to watch football <laughs> but, um anyway another big i guess the thing is eli and uh, Odell Beckham Jr., you know, didn't have a big impact in this game. No. The Giants were still able to win the game. And, and despite it was ugly and they had to come back and everything, I mean, the defense was at like a 100-yard return, I think, on special teams. For the kickoff to win yeah, it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, the Giants showed that they are a very well-rounded team and that if one part of the game isn't so hot, the other parts of the game can kind of pick it up. And, yeah. You know, because there's been games where Eli, you know, a few games ago, he had he had a few good games in a row, and he was kind of carrying the team. And I think this team shows that they're they're very much a team. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like they're Tom Coughlin is, in my opinion, a Hall of Fame coach, and the way his team is performing, even like when other parts aren't performing as well, kind of shows the leadership I think on that team that. When one player gets down, the rest of the team doesn't let it bring them down, you know. Um, I think in, in until – depends on how their records line up, you know, when Romo gets back. But depending on how that lines up, you know, the Giants have a pretty damn good shot at winning this division. And in my opinion, they're the favorites. I know I know Philly's done pretty good the last few weeks. So that it's still pretty wide open. Yeah, but it I, is. I, I think the Giants are the favorite right now. Yeah, I, I would agree with that, and I, it would have been different if Tony Romo and Des Bryant were still in the whole season. I, I think Cowboys probably right. still would have been the favorite, but they're on a four-game losing streak right now, and that's helped the Giants tremendously to take over that division. And uh, speaking of which, a little bit, 
uh, small tidbits is apparently Jerry Jones said that he predicts or he expects Tony Romo to come back at week 10. Um, really? I don't know if he's – I didn't think he was even eligible until week 11. So. Oh, yeah. See, I'm not I'm not entirely – that's just Jerry Jones putting that out there in the media. Maybe, so it may, maybe, he'll, yeah. maybe he'll be able to practice or whatever. I don't know. That could be. Uh, the other thing is, did you see on the sidelines – when Greg Hardy came out after uh, that that's, touchdown run. That's, that's kind of been the story. It has and, been. You know, there's been a lot said about it. It's one of those stories that's like, it's what everyone else has talked on, so I don't want to get too much in this. because. Right. I mean, it's just been... Terry Bradshaw, even before this happened, I don't, I don't know if you remember, I think it was last week or the week before, went off on a big rant about how he doesn't even think Greg Hardy should be able to play in the league. And then uh, some guys on ESPN have said different things. And you know what? I, I don't think anyone gives a shit about my opinion. And if someone's willing to put up with him, then he can play. And if they're not, you know, the only thing I will say is I'm surprised that the coaches are putting up with that shit because – you know, someone should have told him to go sit his ass down and shut the hell up. You know, <laughs> I mean, seriously, be the coach, you know? Yeah. I don't care how good he is, personally. I mean, I mean, whether or not he should be able to play because of his, his past sins, you know, it's the law's job to punish you for breaking the law. It's not your, to me, it's never been like, you know, your job's job to punish you for breaking the law. Right. So, you know, it's whatever. I don't want to dwell too much on that, but yeah, the funniest thing I guess was that Des Bryant was getting in his face, and Des Bryant's a little bit of a diva, and plenty, <laughs> plenty of bad things yeah. to be said about him as well, you know. Right. And if Des Bryant is having to be like the voice of reason, something's fucking wrong. Oh, definitely. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I wouldn't go as far as to say that like Des Bryant yeah. was as bad as like maybe T.O. or like which oh like right. Chad Johnson was. You know, back in, in like, those days and everything. It seems like so far long ago, but it's really not. Thank uh, God. Yeah, thank God. I mean, I wouldn't go as far as to say he's that bad by any means, but he's probably one of the most diva-ish players. And I think a lot of these players get away with it because they are that good. And that's why, like, even ironically enough, like, the Cowboys just put up with T.O. shit because he was yeah. good, but he had just put up with it. And I think they're kind of doing the same thing with Greg Hardy right now, too, which is like... You, you see that more often now in more recent years. Like, uh, I was watching the pregame for Monday Night Football, and Mike Ditka flat out said... He started naming coaches, old-school coaches. He's like, Don Shula, you know, Bill Parcells. He's like, he's like me. I wouldn't have put up with that, yeah. you know? So it, it's just a different mentality nowadays, I guess, where, you know, if you have enough talent they'll kind of look the other way yeah so, i think it is what it is I, it is what it is and I, I think it depends on the team um obviously you know with to and chad johnson <laughs> teams stop putting up with it because they don't play anymore i mean they didn't stop playing because their talent went down they stopped playing because nobody wanted to pick well, them up to declined for sure i think that's chad johnson Maybe not quite as much, but T.O. is definitely getting old. I think that is part of the reason why they stopped putting up with this shit. Yeah. He didn't have the same production. He was still good, I guess. I guess it probably forced him out of the league before he otherwise would have been forced out. Yeah. No, because he definitely wasn't bad. He just wasn't posting, like, superstar numbers anymore. So that's actually a good point. I never really thought about that too much. That's a good point, though. Maybe their attitude did force him out a little bit. Before they otherwise would have been. I think so. I definitely think that they stopped. And you know what? We kind of got way off topic, but I don't well, even mind. Okay. It, yeah. yeah I, mean, now, I mean, the NFC East is pretty awful. So I don't. <laughs> I, I wouldn't mean, say that they're that bad. They're, but... they're, they're not. There's no good team in the NFC East. You know, there's, there's a bunch of okay teams. <laughs> you got, you know, Dallas is a. Uh, if they were in another division, their season probably wouldn't still be alive. I'll put it that way. You know? Yeah. I, I mean, I, I'll agree with that. Definitely. 
I I guess the best way to wrap it up is there. Dallas is definitely missing uh, Des Bryant and Tony Romo right now. And, uh, and that's that's apparent. It's, I mean, a blind person could say that. I'm sorry for any blind folks out there that may be watching the show. <laughs> yeah, come on, man. They could have been listening on the radio. So yeah, yeah. I don't know. That was that was terrible of me. <laughs> um. No, I know what you mean. Though, like. It, it, metaphorically speaking, uh, anyone could see that, you know, if you know one thing about the Cowboys season is that they need Romo and Dez back, especially Romo. Oh, especially here's, Romo. here's another interesting thing about uh, the Cowboys is, so they have Joseph Randall, who really did nothing wrong, and they decided to start Christian Michael instead but Darren McFadden got all the carries. What the hell is going on with the running organization over in Dallas? I I don't understand what the hell. If if you have any Dallas running backs in fantasy, I'm sorry because I don't know who the fuck you would start. No. They're they're trying to figure it out. That's all it is. They're losing games and they're reworking schemes and they're just trying to see if they can find something that works. And they almost did this week. Yeah. And, Gary uh, McFadden uh, looked the best he's looked in years. And he did. He had a really good game. And but again, going back, he has an amazing offensive line to look that good with. Yeah. So it you know, whatever. Yeah. Dallas, it's not over yet. It, it might be soon. But, you know, cross your fingers and hope that the Giants and the Eagles keep blowing it and maybe you you can have a shot at the playoffs when Romo and Dez come back. Yeah. You know, it, and they they have some tough games coming up, even when they come back, and it would be definitely good to watch. And if you have opinions on, uh, I don't know, we had we covered a lot of different topics on this. You know what? I got topic. I got one thing I almost forgot about. Okay. Apparently, uh, the Saints game was being broadcast uh, on Fox nationally, I guess, or at least almost nationally. I didn't and get at it. And halftime. Well, at halftime, I heard a lot of it on the West Coast and like the East Coast. So maybe in the Midwest. I don't know what game you were watching. So uh, but, uh, Jets and Patriots were on instead. Okay. Well, they cut away during uh, during halftime. Flat out said it's a boring game. And there was like an uproar on Twitter of like fans because they cut to this Dallas and Giants game. And it's like basically Fox cut away, and it ended up you know the Colts ended up making that game interesting. We'll talk about that you know at length later, but it ended up being an interesting game, and a lot of people were pissed because it kind of showed Fox money grub in there and switching the game to a, <laughs> I guess bigger market teams. Yeah. You know. Yeah. Well, they have they have a bad habit of maybe overplaying the NFC East a little bit, and the NFC East you know hasn't done a whole lot outside of the Giants in a while. Yeah. So kind of an interesting little, I don't know, shot, it, uh, maybe a little disrespectful there to, it, it just, it, it was very distasteful, I think, in a lot of fans' yeah, mouths. Yeah, that's actually a really good point. Because between the Cowboys, who have a giant fan base, the Giants, who have a pretty good fan base, and then Philly has a big fan base, I I, I never even really thought about it, but I think they do tend to overcast uh, NFC no, East it, maybe, games. Maybe it wasn't the Giants and, and Cowboys game. It was, uh, it was, no, it was the Redskins and Tampa game is what it was. Oh. And, which, is, which is D.C., which is the D.C. market. Yeah. Because... The Cowboys later, but it's just an interesting little tidbit I wanted to throw in. We're talking about NFC East teams because these are, I think, the only well, I know they're the only two that play each other this week. So uh, it's it's kind of weird how much focus it gets, and it's just because of TV markets, and it's kind of bullshit. And I just wanted to say that somewhere without making a whole episode about it. <laughs> so, well, holy shit! <laughs> now we have a lot that people can discuss. Yeah. So you can always leave us a comment. You can follow us on Facebook. You can follow us on Twitter. We went a little bit long on here, but I think that's okay because we know we had a lot of a lot of range of topics this you know this episode. And uh, 
you know, you can always voice your opinion and uh, voicing your opinion is a good thing because sometimes you get shout outs. Everybody loves shout outs. Don't you love shout outs? You're, you're, you're loving shout outs drinking that beer right now. <laughs> Anyways, yes, definitely leave this comment and come back next week. Please, for the love of